This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it's time to talk tech, get geeky. It is the Awesome Cast episode 333 in the new year 2017. The first one from the new, really, these, we reformatted and defragged Mayhem Studios, and here we are. And uh, and, and we hope you, we hope you like that. Let, let us know what you think of the new look here. Uh, but with us, we got a whole lineup over on the couch. We had the couch grew. The grew, We upgraded the couch. You should say comfortably on the couch. Comfortably, <laughs> yeah, comfortably. That's, that's a big deal. Comfortably on the couch. First of all, uh, Katie Dudas of wait, where's your thing? I don't know. Uh, I, I, all the all the buttons are in different places now. <laughs> Katie Dudas at Katie Dudas on the Twitter social media extraordinaire with the scare house. Hello, I'm on a couch and not like stuck to chilla. <laughs> this arm room. I know. I got like, like <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's the elbow, the awesome elbow room show. And with us right there with the elbow room is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. Hey, how's it going? Next time, if I come here alone, I'm just laying down. Oh yeah, <laughs> gonna chill. It's gonna be like like back in the day when I had uh, LB on the other show, just like laid out on Nyquil because we used to have a futon in the studio oh, before we did awesome cast and he was just like passed out trying to re- talk wrestling with me and it, was, it just didn't work out with us and oh there's a stranger here <laughs> we brought somebody new in here we have so much room we got to fill the space right max parker the game guy from the uh post gazette here in pittsburgh joins us how you doing max fantastic it's awesome to be here how many times has that joke been used Never? Never, like almost every week. Every week, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I pick the low hanging fruit. So. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but thank you for joining us. Uh, tell people real quick, what do you do over there at the Post Gazette? I'm a video game columnist, so I handle news, reviews, interviews uh, about all things uh, gaming and tech related gaming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as I tagged our, our, our buddy Chachi here, uh, Anthony Walker uh, uh, co wrote a um, game a game guide, like an end of year Christmas uh, article with you guys over on KDK one time. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, we just we just. I, yeah, we partner with KDK a lot about gaming related stuff. We just did a a family fret. What was it? It was games that uh, with kids who want violent games, uh, <laughs> but the games the parents don't want to buy them violent games, but the kids want violent games. So what game should they get? That is a that's, long, that's very, a long headline. It's super specific. We came up with Splatoon, uh, yeah, Clash Royale, and uh, what was oh uh, Plants vs Zombies. Uh, Garden Warfare. Too. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, you're going to be sticking with us. Let us know your awesome thing of the week and talking tech with us. Uh, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out over at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio. And, uh, and, oh, that's the wrong. I have to find my buttons again. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's a reformatting process here um but anyways uh go check that out subscribe to the show check out our awesome chats our interviews with some great people in the tech community uh startups tech people uh we had max hote from the live stream last year uh talking about their new camera with us which we used on the pod crawl and you can also support the show awesome cast i'm sorry patreon.com slash awesome cast uh, we're going to be reformatting this here in the next couple of days uh so but thanks a lot to those who are supporting us including matt weller out there and uh mike fedor mike fedor show on the twitter uh supporting the show and giving us uh, articles and and uh and, and we really do appreciate it we're gonna have some uh, fun stuff for you here in the new year so let's get into the show uh with our awesome things of the week uh max i'm gonna go with you because i it sounds like this is gonna be uh pretty big across the board here what's your awesome thing here the awesome thing of the week would probably be relating to alexa <laughs> learning how to use alexa that was the christmas gift that uh, i've been getting used to for since christmas and it's been a learning process but it's been going really well i my expectations were low we, we've all who's used it here We'll discuss this later. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I got the dot, which was a, it was like a special forty bucks, and so I wasn't ex- expectations were low, but Alexa is pretty fantastic. Because the dot is the lowest end one, right? Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
And yeah, it's it's a hundred dollars less than the a actual Echo, the full fledged Echo. But they do the same thing. It's just I think the only difference is the speaker. Um, but the Dot Alexa is pretty great, and I think I like her more than Siri now. So what's the biggest thing that you you ask Alexa? Uh, I ask her to read my news, and I have completely uh, I it's my own news, so I I can have full control of the line, like what news sources she pulls from. So I ask her for my daily news, what the daily deals are, weather. Uh, I ask her to play music, life hacks, uh, pretty much all that. And now, like, I want to expand and like get smart light switches and smart locks. So just give her full control of like my entire life. That's the goal here. So, have you added any skills? Jeopardy. Okay. Jeopardy was <laughs> one I added. Uh, Did you add the fart skill that we were talking about the no, last? What is that? A little bit ago. I haven't seen that. No, what does it do? I think I thought you were the one told us. There was I pulled up an old awesome cast when I was doing the sizzle reel uh, for last year, and you I thought you were talking to me about the the, the fart hmm. skill. I have hmm. to I have to look that one up because I don't I didn't <laughs> add that skill. I swear it was you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, or maybe it was AJ. Could have been eight. I bet it was AJ. <laughs> In the long run, it was probably AJ. Yeah. So. So so you've done Jeopardy, Jeopardy, Dog Facts. Okay, which is a good one. <laughs> Um, I think those are the big ones that I use the most. What now, do, you, do you use? Do you have? Do you have? Do you pay for Prime Music? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the one thing I'm I'm thinking about now. They're definitely reeling me in. So hmm. I added. I have a lot of home automation equipment. Mm -hmm. So I added. We're adding. We're trying to add a skill or two per week so we can really master them. But I've added the iHome skill, which gives me control over my my any of my iHome lighting equipment. And then the Lutron scale, which gives me, because I have multiple brands. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've added the Harmony, Logitech Harmony scale, which gives it control over our TV. Oh, and then the Nest will be next. And then there's some other stuff I want to add in over time. But the one thing I noticed is when I ask her to play me music, I get a, here's a sample of, of what you're of what you're asking for. And, oh, by the way, it's please subscribe to, to Amazon Music. Now, I noticed... There's a Pandora skill, which you can use Pandora for free. There's a Spotify skill. I don't know if you have to be a Spotify customer. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So mm -hmm. so I'm I'm the one thing that I heard though is you can add music to Amazon for free without paying for their music stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you can play that on voice command. So what I was thinking about doing was taking my Apple Music library and injecting it into um, Amazon, mm -hmm. and then I would have the majority of songs I'm listening to at, at a given time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, I didn't know, realize you could do that. Yeah, because yeah, you can ask to play a genre, and that's fine. She'll do that. Okay. But if you ask, if you're not a, a Prime Music subscriber, if you ask her to play something specific, okay. then she can't. But if you say, like, for over the holidays, just like play holiday music, and she'd play. Okay. Holiday then I'll I'll start using that at least for now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice. By it's the way, I'm I'm going down uh, in the background here at this uh, uh, their 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 page for it, and um, the always getting smarter gets kind of creepy, <laughs> a little bit on their on their page. So, um, but uh, and, and Chili, you've been using uh, Alexa for a while, right? No, we just got oh, I just, just got the dot in. for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Carla Carla got me the dot for Christmas, and. We set it up. I paired it with a Bluetooth speaker just because I had an extra one laying around, mm -hmm. and it's been it's been awesome. The hey, turn off the lights. Hey, turn on the TV. The only thing I haven't I haven't tried, and I meant to try it last night, and I'll try to remember to try it tonight. Is I don't know. Can you compound commands? Like, can I say turn off the lights and the TV? Mm. I don't know if she knows both at one time. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the one the one thing that I thought was interesting is there is a mute button on the top, so she can't hear you, but it turns the whole LED red, and it stays lit. I almost wish, and it's really, really bright. I, that's the one thing I was pretty impressed with. The yep. lighting on the top is really bright, so you can definitely pick up on when she's listening and whatnot. Mm. We've had a few false triggers, and we can't figure out why necessarily. It's, it's false triggering, and she just pretty much comes back and says... I don't understand the question you were trying to ask. Um, we purposely didn't do the voice setup, but it's because we want to make sure it understands all of us and doesn't hone in on one person. Mm -hmm. um, 
but no, it's been, it's been a super positive experience. Um, I almost wish I didn't have a garage cause she can start my car. Um, wow. <laughs> and she can call Uber for you. Yeah, I mean, there, there's great. a lot yep. of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing I really like about it is it kind of, it wasn't so intense on a single email address like the home was. And that was my major turn on to the, to the echo and, and, and Alexa was that, it could go kind of cross users and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing that I thought was pretty cool or kind of creepy at the same time is every command you give her um, shows up in the app and it asks you, did, did it get it right? Right. And it wants you to rate, you know, how it's, how it's working. Yeah. Um, it yeah. is kind of weird to see every command or everything that it's perceived as a command. Not, not only that, you can listen to the audio. Oh, I didn't know from that. From the app. From your, you, yeah, yeah. Every you, you, question you've ever asked. You can the do the same thing with like, Google. Every time you've used the uh, mm -mm, Google, yeah. um, it, it has the little recording. It was like, hey, this is what we heard. This is what we think it was. And then you can go in and I think I think maybe purge those too. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can, you, can, you can delete them off the list. I don't know if they go away forever. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. Yeah. So they, it's, you can ask it about privacy and she says that she's only listening if you say Alexa. And then that, and she's very upfront about that information going to, straight to Amazon. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Transparency from your, from your disembodied voice right. device. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Do we, I, I feel like we just need to roll down the, the Alexa train. Uh, Chilla. Can you tell us about your awesome thing of the week? So that's my Which awesome thing we of the week about. is that <laughs> but, we, <laughs> got, we got the dot as well. And I'm just, I'm enamored. And Carla pretty much, I think she was super fearful. She, I, I think she kind of made the comment of, I really didn't want to get you this for Christmas, but I know you really <laughs> wanted it. <laughs> and it's going to ruin my life too. I'm leaving you for Alexa. Um, I don't need you anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. But I don't think she used those exact words, but no, it's, it's, it's become a staple of the day-to-day -day life around the house. Even set a timer for two minutes because we're going to put Christopher to bed or whatever. He talks to it. It doesn't understand him real well, but he's two. So what more do you want? But it's just been, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. And the skill set is, is expanding. And that, that again, that was the one thing that, kind of turned me off to google i know their device is a lot newer with the home um but the alexa skills there's there's plenty of them the one thing that i was also impressed with is because the skills go back to the manufacturers at least for a lot of my home equipment and siri also can speak to those vendors they're in sync so if i tell if I ask Alexa if a light's on or off, mm -hmm. and then I alter the state and then ask Siri, she they can keep up with each other because they're going through nice. kind of centralized systems. Mm -hmm. nice. So it, it works well in that respect. Now, obviously, if I wanted to build macros out and set up scenes, I'd have to set up the scene on both. But to control a single light or to control something singularly or ask if it's on or off, they can both pull and they can both figure out the current state. Hmm. Um, so I thought wow. that that was one definite benefit to those two platforms is they don't speak to each other directly, but they can speak to the devices and gleam what's going on. So I, I was pretty, pretty happy with, with the experience so far. Have you been trying to compare them? Like if one doesn't know the answer of, to like a we, question. So, you, so we haven't trying, asked right? a lot of, we haven't been asking a lot of questions. Mm. Um, I've never had a problem with Siri for sports scores or when's the next Penguins game mm -hmm. or anything like that. But I do like with Alexa, I can kind of, you set your home teams, you set a lot of information so she can definitely figure out real quick, like the, the flash briefing and mm -hmm. then yeah. give me the sports briefing, all that kind of stuff. I will say, and the reason that we're trying to slowly add skills is because there is definite syntax to how you need to speak. And what and how you need to ask things. Yep. Um, so that is the one reason we are kind of slowly working our way in is just so we can make sure we get good use out of every skill. Right. 
but it's yeah. it's it's been really really awesome. Siri Siri's better with sports. <laughs> Siri, yeah. I I, I I asked Alexa when the last because Steelers play the the Dolphins. So I didn't know when the last time the Dolphins were in the playoffs. Alexa had no idea. Siri was like 2009. They played the Ravens. They lost by two touchdowns. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> That's great. All right. Uh, Katie? I got a dot. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the box. <laughs> no, I, we were, a group of us had gotten dots. And so one of us had taken out of the box. And I have not yet gotten to taking mine out of the box yet. Uh, the interesting thing was it was the Alexa tell me a story. Mm. which sounded like it was like a choose-your-own-adventure kind of a scenario where it would, depending on what you picked, it told you a different version of the story or took a different step, which was kind of interesting and kind of, you know, hmm. yeah. we haven't tried that. That was one of the, the commands I thought was interesting that you guys didn't touch on yet. Hmm. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I haven't decided what I'm doing with it yet. As, as with any technology, I'm fearful. <laughs> <laughs> so it lives in the box. Well, well that's the interesting thing because don't you have to kind of pick where to put it, right? I know mm. that one's a little more portable, but, mm-hmm. like, like mm-hmm. what is it the thing you put in the living room is mm-hmm. it the thing you put in the bathroom or you know kitchen whatever the case may be right and like I, I feel like i'm never in my living room to be able to centrally locate it right so, so i i don't know so we our our floor plans kind of open the house isn't ginormous but we kind of centrally located it on the bottom floor just because from any room you can at least turn and and it definitely picks up from a pretty far distance um and it's worked well. Now I've actually thought, oh, maybe we should get one for upstairs because <laughs> I know, I know. Then you want to put it everywhere. Yeah, then you do want to put it everywhere, yeah. and you're like, well, this would be nice to have. Like, we have up, up at the top of our steps. There's a table, and there's just by happenstance a a, a plug, an outlet right there. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense because you could yell out from any room and. And, and that's where uh, those are, are the echo uh, the dots are are battery operated is that right no no it's no. plug in they are plug into the yeah. wall but they're they're the tiny ones right yes yeah. so it's about the size of a hockey puck right yeah right hey, would you like to see i can take it out of the box it is, it sure, might as well. it is shockingly great at picking up your voice yeah, yeah. You're like over, it can be <laughs> like it oh it's an unboxing oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're voiding the warranty well, when you open the box there's a black thing ah. oh. <laughs> and then yeah. <laughs> hear the shuffling of the it is oh, a hockey puck <laughs> oh, it's bigger than i thought and then you got like buttons on top and there's and you compare it to any bluetooth speaker or there's like a, a mini like what you would have for a headphone jack kind mm-hmm. of thing out mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. <laughs> we just have it paired to a small bluetooth speaker that's that's working pretty pretty well the one thing i was pretty impressed with too is it constantly pulls for its known bluetooth devices so like for a while the speaker was off alexa knew to just go through the built-in speaker mm-hmm. and then as soon as the the bluetooth speaker came back on she paired right to it and when she pairs i think she says hello or something like that <laughs> and it comes through the other speaker which mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty pretty cool yeah it's awesome i say good night to her <laughs> <laughs> she'll tell you a joke <laughs> yep <laughs> Oh jeez! I want to keep, stay on our good side for the robot uprising. You know, yeah. I want to stay on the good side. Well, speaking of the robot uprising, uh, Max, as a game player, I, I imagine you have uh, done the Mech Warrior series at some point. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, mm-hmm. well, it appears um, that, uh, we, that that's going to be sooner than we expected. The South Korean robots company, because who else uh, just build a real Gundam? Again, I kind of look at that as a Mech Warrior right there. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're looking at this. It's basically for a test bed, uh, sort of situation right now, but, uh, they're really looking at this as uh, could be military and, and cargo and uh, kind of implications to this. And then, you know, just to, just to drive home the creepiness, um, here it is taking its first few steps, uh, in video form here. And, uh, again, it just kind of, uh, it, you kind of wonder if it looks CG, like it should be right. Oh, it's crouching. It's just crouching. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That looks stable. <laughs> also, I want to note, note that there's giant like cords going somewhere <laughs> that it's attached to. Is, is, uh, I thought I just assumed that was just a, in case it fell over, like the person inside wouldn't get horribly injured. Yeah, but but well, maybe. Oh yeah, a, that's right. There are. Uh, I didn't even notice the ones on top. I'm, I was talking about the cords on the ground oh, going someone's over. On, 
Uh, oh, there's and I don't I don't have the video, but there's the cords. Oh, going. those yeah, cords. Yeah, oh, there's okay. cords on the yeah, bottom, and then it, yeah, it, it is attached to like a, a a crane on the top too. Yeah. So I guess if it does tilt over, <laughs> you'll you'll be okay. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's much protection there to no. be honest. No. No. they don't want it to become wireless because if it becomes self aware, it can get away from them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it becomes self aware, it'll just unplug itself at this point. Um, so that's it, and that's 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 the real. It's it's for real. <laughs> I thought tech would kind of pass the mech dream behind with drones and everything. Like, wouldn't it be smarter just to have someone remotely control and not have someone in danger in the mech? You know? Right, right. I, I don't know. I, it feels like a little bit of, um, like, you need to just to have that direct control in the perspective, right? Yeah. Because when you're, you get, you, not that I've been on the drone, but... You know that kind of detachment of not really seeing where you're going and reacting to how, how it's you know going over there, mm-hmm, right? Sure. And I think I think this is for impl- you know meant to be implemented where I need to make sure I don't drop this box of cargo, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, and things like that. So yeah. it, it reminds me of like the lifter from Aliens. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that joke was in like every other other article <laughs> I saw about this. So oh yeah. Well, um, I want to talk some more video games with you, Max, here in a moment. I saw you had another uh, kind of side awesome thing of the week I want to touch on. We, yeah. we talk about that topic a lot on this show. But first, I want to give a shout out to our friends over on Slice on Broadway. It's good to see them again in the new year. <laughs> They're still there. They made it. Um, but uh, yeah. good friends that have been supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time now. And, uh, of course, with their locations in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, I saw some tweets by uh, was it you Jagoff that tweeted us uh, this past week that uh, that he swung by and got a whole pie down there uh, over over at uh, uh, PNC Park and they're also at Main Street in Carnegie and right here in Broadway on Broadway Avenue hence slice on Broadway here in Beachview right along the tracks. Uh, so go check them out. Sign up for their uh, VIP club. I've been starting to get those emails. That gets me excited for pizza deals. Um, and they're going to have uh, online ordering very, very soon. So go check them out. Great guys over there. Um, if you check out my Twitter, and I think I retweeted on Awesome Cast, um, we have a video of uh, of the pizza of the pizza run tonight. Uh, so go check that out and uh, let them know that the Awesome Cast sent you. Thanks so much to those guys uh now max uh, so um i saw you looks like you got your hands on the playstation vr that's true yeah i'm a big vr believer it's early in the playstation vr's lifespan well really all vr's lifespan um so like all that launch software is still there and still pretty good so i'm just hoping that the support just stays through for the next many years but like right now i'm i am a, a big fan of the vr Awesome. So, yeah. so, so, what did you, what did you, what did you get to play with? All right. The most recent one I played was the Star Wars X-wing VR mission, which is free if you have Battlefront. Um, people are really divided on Battlefront. Is this a pro? I mean, anyone play? I Battlefront? like Battlefront, so yeah. I'm, pro, I'm pro Battlefront. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Like I'm in a total Star Wars state of mind since Rogue <laughs> One came out. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna revisit Battlefront, and it's <laughs> just as fun and gorgeous as I remembered it when it came out. And so the X-Wing VR mission is free if you have Battlefront. So I put on the PlayStation VR headset and, uh, yeah, I flew an X-Wing <laughs> under around a Star Destroyer and killed a bunch of TIE fighters. And it was everything I hoped it would be. Uh, <laughs> a little short, but, I mean, it's a free It's free if you have the game. So it's mm-hmm. about 15, 20 minutes. So I, but I could play. It's yeah, it's not bad. I could play a full game, like a full multiple-hour game uh, just same x-wing just switch the planet up i think that would be easy enough uh but i hope that there's more of that because it is a lot of fun that's awesome have you have you had a chance uh, for comparison uh to get into any of the uh, the other vr helmets oh yeah yeah i've played uh, i've used oculus and vive yeah Mm -hmm. um i mean the vive is a superior product Mm -hmm. uh i mean you get what you pay for it's really expensive Mm -hmm. and you can um and it has like the uh the room, what's the actual word for the room tracking? Yeah, the, the room, room tracking yeah, and everything. Scaling, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can move around a little bit more. But uh, the VR, or PlayStation VR for its price point, um, it's, it's the cheapest one out there if you're not counting the the mobile options. Uh, but it's it's not like, it's not entry level. Mm-hmm. It's not like a cheap product, I mean. Um, it's not a cheap product, but it's it's really impressive. I like, like, I'm, I'm impressed with PlayStation yeah, VR. because it's always seemed to be like the good accessible experience right. for people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. it's... Still, if you're adding the PlayStation 4 price plus the headset, I mean, you're 800 I think it's uh, $800 with everything you need. So that's still not super affordable uh, for most, but uh, it's, um, it's it, for, what you're, for what you're getting or for what you're paying. It's a great product. 
And I haven't got the, I haven't got to play it with the PlayStation VR. How's the con- how were the controls? Are you just using a PlayStation controller for it, Battlefront, or are you using some kind of other? For the X Wing mission, you're using the you're using the PlayStation controller. Okay. And it depends on the game. Some games use the Move controllers. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like the Renaissance. That's the the comeback story of the Move controllers. They're okay. They're still okay. They're exactly the same as they were for the PlayStation Three. Um, so some games use those motion controllers, and others just use the the dual PlayStation Four DualShock. Okay. Uh, um, but it's it, like again, it's not as good as the Vive uh, motion controllers, but it's solid. Cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, we got uh, a couple of things uh, submitted here uh, over over the last couple of days. I wanted to uh, uh, touch on here. Uh, first of all, Chilla, this is for you. This is a question for you from Brandon. He asked me, and I really didn't have an answer for him. Uh, he's looking for a new tablet, uh, Amazon or a regular Google Android One. What's your recommendation? I don't know specifically like what's good in the Android world right now. So, going on the high end, obviously you could look at a Nexus device and 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 Google's devices that that does get pretty pricey. Um, but it's always nice because you're always getting up to the date up up to date updates on it. Um, I would hold off because we got CES coming up in World Mobile Congress if you're looking at like the Samsung lines. Um, and then from the Amazon, I, we were actually talking about this at work and no one no one could answer directly today. Has Amazon added the Google Play Store to their tablets or is it just the Amazon Marketplace? I think it's just the Amazon Marketplace. Because we, we saw people adding a bunch of corporate software, so we're thinking that some you can and we don't think they side loaded really. Well, and you can't it, where I work, you can't root or you get kicked off yeah, the system. Yeah. So we're wondering, is there was there was there a, a build out? Yeah. And, and I I was really impressed, and I don't know if they're still running any of the sales, but the 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 Amazon the HD the Fire HD. Um, has been on sale recently, and and I've heard a lot of good things about it. In addition to the Amazon Marketplace, there's Amazon Underground, and they have a lot of games and stuff free, and it's mm-hmm. all free. Mm-hmm. Um, if it were me personally, I'd go with the Nexus line because I know I would get updates, and that's something that's important. Has the to Nexus me. been updated recently? So there's the the Nexus they came out with last year that has the touch panel and the keyboard, okay. and it's magnetic keyboard, right, right, right. Um, I mean, you're, it's, you're, it's a little more than a tablet at that point. Yeah. So, um, but it, you don't have to get the keyboard. You don't have. You can get okay. just the tablet. Um, I mean, they're already on seven dot one. They'll be getting seven dot one dot one, which um, no one else will have other than like the Pixel and a couple other devices. Mm-hmm. Um, I would go at this today if it were me. I'd go Amazon or um, the Nexus line, depending on your price point. And then what I would really if you're willing to wait two months, wait to see what happens at World Mobile Congress and CES. Samsung's going to be making announcements multiple times over the next need, few months. But if you need something right now, but if you need it right now, I, I, price point, I'd go Amazon. If you're if you're interested in longevity, you could, for the price of a Chrome, for a price of the the Nexus device, you could probably buy an Amazon device every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then get updates that way. There you go. Um, then you have same. a bunch of spare tablets that you can <laughs> do things with, like we do. <laughs> like, oh, this is for watching video on the treadmill. This is for, yeah, yeah. It's kind of nice to have those available. Uh, speaking of old devices, uh, producer Missy has shared this on uh, the Facebook page. Well, she's looking at me weird. Yes, I'm sharing oh, stuff that you did. <laughs> yes. This is happening right now. Uh, but anyways, though, so this is, this is a... Um, a security camera uh, that that uh, turns your old phone, Android or, or iPhone, uh, into a moving uh, security camera that 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 spins and everything. Uh, so I don't see the name of the device on here though. Did, 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 does it? Is it linked on here? It's in the article. Is it in the article? There's no article linked. Oh. It's just a video on 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 the Facebook. It's, um... it's at the end here. Presence three sixty. I think so. Yeah, they have an Indiegogo. There was an Indiegogo yeah. link in the uh, top. Yep. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So I was trying to think which uh, crowdfunding. <laughs> one of the one of those, right? <laughs> one of those. And then I have to give a shout out uh, once again, Brandon, that we're just helping out with the um, with his his uh, uh, um, tablet, um, the uh, Snoopy. <laughs> I really hope my mom's still watching the Snoopy drone. <laughs> 
that's uh that's the completely the red baron flying <laughs> house around the drone it's amazing Whoa. look at that thing go. <laughs> so uh check that out i don't know if you can get that anywhere but uh and it's interesting this is just attached to a uh, an article about everything you need to know about drones so <laughs> way to go guys um also from missy this was interesting uh, for those that need to track their children um the link's not coming up for me there it is um this is a little bluetooth device i guess you could you can attach to like their bags or something that pairs with their phone yeah it's mm. primarily for like if you're out hiking you don't have a whole lot of reception stuff it uses a bluetooth pair in order to not get lost from your I will mic her in future weeks, by the way. I think we're picking her up mostly on the mics. But uh, but yeah, for um, you know a little bit of the uh, off-the-grid uh, kind of situation there. Um, looks like it's, it's Gotenna is the, is the name of it. Um, but uh, yeah, you use low-watt low v- VHF, transmits messages, um, and GPS locations. So pretty cool. I actually looked at, looked at this, and I don't know if it was the same brand a while back. We were interested in this for, for um, where we camp and hunt. Mm-hmm. Um, because there is no cell reception and we use walkie talkies that have short range and whatnot. So you're constantly either picking up someone else's conversation <laughs> yeah. or, or you can't, you can't contact the person you really want to contact. So this, this is really, really cool. I'd be interested. Do they tell you how far it can go? I didn't see the range in there. I didn't pay attention that much. I was like, well, oh, this is cool. It says, uh, where'd it go uh it's it's a mile when you're in the city uh it's not you get like up to six miles when you're in the woods wow there you go that's awesome yeah yeah that'd be a good use for i mean in the city so you don't lose kids Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well uh, you know when when the iphone isn't enough Right? Or well, yeah. Ditch it or something. If a kid is too young, maybe. Yeah, that yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because well, I'm guessing, because it, it's its own antenna and pairs over Bluetooth, I'm guessing you could give them an iPod Touch. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Or send them out with a, a phone that's not Just che- active. Cheaper, not attached yeah. on everything. Yeah. Sure. It, it, you can send the old one with them mm-hmm. that, that you're not using for that, that security camera. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Katie, uh, what, what do you want to talk about here next? Oh, man, I got all kinds of stuff. Yeah, talking. you got a couple things in do here. Do you want to talk about online dating or do you want to talk about the only tracking, fitness tracking ring? Ooh. The only? Really? That's yeah, well, I, well, it's not the only. It's it's the one now because there's not really any out there like this right now. Everything mm-hmm. is tracking on your wrist. Obviously, I have a Fitbit and we use that to keep track. But this motive is actually a ring that either is rose gold or slate gray. And it's supposed to keep track of your resting heart rates, your workout. It's waterproof. Uh, it's Bluetooth. It's got a battery life of up to five days. You it's can charge it. Your... Yeah, isn't it amazing? Wow. It's titanium. It's huge. Mm. Yeah. So this guy will keep track of how well you're sleeping, your resting heart rate, see how far you run um, when you walked. And again, with uh, creepy, creepy headlines, always with you. Mm-hmm. I like how they, their charger, they give you a magnetic keychain charger or a USB dock, which, I mean, I really like how it looks, and it's, mm-hmm. it's nice that you can easily take it with you. Does it have an internal pedometer to like track steps, or does it use your phone's GPS? I think it looks like it, it looks like phone GPS. Okay, yeah, because I was I was wondering how that would work, and how it could track, because your hand is always moving. Yeah, like almost always. Look at all these so, steps like, I'm getting. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, right, exactly. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's yes. Hmm. But it, it's pretty neat. Like it, it's something different. It is large, if, especially if you're not used to wearing a ring. This would be something that you would definitely notice you had on. But I guess if you're not used to wearing a wristwatch or something, you'd notice you were having. Right, right. Hmm. So it's just another step of something different. Interesting. Yeah, another take on it. They actually, and you get, they send you a sizing thing, which I think is pretty cool. They mail you the sizing set, have you test your ring size, you find the right size, and then you use that to get your, uh, to get your actual ring. So that's that's cool too. That's also a huge like. That's a lot of hoops to jump through if you're just looking for a fitness tracker. Like you have to decide to buy it, get the sizers, mm-hmm. send it back. That's a lot of work. Surprisingly, it's only two hundred dollars. I mean, like I was expecting when I hit the reserve now, unless that's the reserve price. But it looks like it's two hundred dollars. Yeah, it's two hundred dollars. I, I was, you know what I mean? Like when you're like doing so many steps in the process, that's, it makes yeah. It- 
I'm yeah. guessing because it's a ring and there's a heart rate sensor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. guessing it has to be fit pretty snug for it to maintain mm-hmm. and get that heart rate. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a little pricey for a fitness tracker. Do you think? Well, not seem pricey. Enough. What's a fit? Bit. Fitbits, yeah, a basic uh, Fitbit's eighty to one hundred dollars. They can do heart rate. Well, that's the thing; it's just those yeah, stats. the nice ones. Yeah. Are, yeah. The nice ones are like one fifty to two hundred. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. the heart rate ones. Mm-hmm. So, get up there. Yeah, I, I think that works. Yeah. yeah, that works. And I, I like the what was it three to five days of charge. Mm-hmm. That's, that's nice. That's nice. that's nice. Yeah. Well, there's no screen or anything. It's just doing whatever it needs to, and just interfaces, right? So, does it do sleep? Yeah. Nice. Because it also. Three to five day Charge on, my on your Fitbit and does more. And does more. We, 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 they're saying they can't hear you out there. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's just the resonance in my head that I, I, I think that people can hear you apparently. Um, so yeah, still. Oh, the, the Pebble is still RIP Pebble. Uh, oh. The Pebble oh. is still like a week. I know. Uh, <laughs> pebble too. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> You're such a good one. <laughs> I, um, anyways, uh, didn't, they, didn't they come up with some agreement? They're going to keep it for. A couple, are they? They're going. I thought they were going to keep support for a couple months. Yeah. at least. Mm-hmm. Okay, a couple months. Either way, I got this in November, and I don't expect it to work with iOS 11 in September. Mm. I bet you someone will. I bet you they'll release the source code. It'll be open source. <sighs> I'm going to have fine. to hack my Pebble. Is there, is there going to be? A, is there enough people that have this? That because look like, at the app store. The app store is all um, generated by it's normals. True. It's not <laughs> it's right, right. right. <laughs> but, but I'm talking. It's about, not a bunch of Pebble develop. I mean, it's not a bunch of people from not the company that, many, that developed. Not all that, that many stuff. people got a Pebble too, though. That yeah. That I so don't I'm know. in a really slight majority there. Minority there with with you know the, the, the supporting that specifically, right? Mm-hmm. So like 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 my brother he just got a um um the, was it the time I know it's the color one, uh, so yeah and it's just like oh you know how long is that gonna last right so um because they're still in the stores glass still functions glass still functions <laughs> well there you go I guess <laughs> and we're like three operating systems later that is true <laughs> that is true but I've had specific problems with Pebble when they upgraded OS mm-hmm. and I got to wait for Pebble to update their app so if that's not happening. What do we do now? So otherwise, you know, hey, when I, I noticed that uh, whenever the power goes down and I forget to plug it in for the rest of the day, um, in those few instances, it still works as a very nice watch. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Sheila, tell me about how my MacBook is going to be touchscreen. So I don't, I don't know if you saw this today. There's Airbar made an announcement. It's an early CES announcement. Mm-hmm. They created a bar that magnetically clings onto the bezel, and they, they're starting with the MacBook Air. And it you plug it into the USB port, and it it kind of reminded me of what was the little the little square that you could put, and it could kind of track infrared your finger movements and your hand gestures and whatnot. It, oh, that that like you had the fake keyboard kind of on your desk yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I remember. It kind of reminds me of that, but it actually monitors the screen. This, um, this video is not helping in demonstrating things, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Yeah>. so random. <laughs> yeah. I don't even understand. What's... But I, I thought it was an interesting concept that would kind of bring that touch mm-hmm. to pretty much any screen. The one thing I'm interested in is they talked about that it could pick up the hairs on a brush and you could actually like paint with a paintbrush on what? your screen. Wow. Whoa. Right. I'm not I'm not buying that. I I'd, I'd <laughs> like to see that cuz for $99? Yeah. Cuz it's yeah, right. cuz it's going to monitor upwards. Yeah. So if how is it going to see anything on the other side of the bristles on the other side of the brush? Yeah. yeah. Um I don't know this got that I mean I threw in the the article from Nine to Five Mac, but it got a lot of traction today across the Verge, and, all, and I'm guessing it's because it's one of the CES type announcements mm-hmm. is why it got so much play. Um, they've had this bar out there for some time, um, and it was primarily aimed at Windows, from what I, from what I was reading. Um, Mac's going to be kind of a newer thing for them, so I'm interesting to see if it gains traction, will it? kind of spawn more mac touch type things i still don't see a huge need for touch in my day-to-day life but i know others do Uh, more power to them 
but uh, I thought it was an interesting concept. It's not, I mean, it's, re it's, it's it's not a required. It's nice to have. I would love to have this as a panel here. You know, as I said, I'd love to have Wirecast be the touch thing. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, it it's still. I, now that you have that, you can use. Now I have. Display. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about that. I have apparently acquired. Apparently acquired. This is how things happen. Uh, an <laughs> iPad Pro. Uh, so, and uh, I haven't really thought about exactly. I knew I needed a new iPad, but I didn't know I needed this much iPad. And I, I'm kind of like, well, I guess it looks really cool to play Mario Run. Well, I am loving this idea that it's just a touchpad that's like part of my desk right now <laughs> because I don't know what else to do with it. Um, so, I mean, I got to get a keyboard and everything for it too, right? I mean, to get a lot of that functionality uh, out of it. Or the pen, the fancy pen. How much pencil. Is, yeah. pencil. Oh, the pencil. Yeah. Pencil, I'm sorry. How much is that? $99 right. for the pencil. That's right. 150 Ooh. I think, for the keyboard. Jeez. <laughs> that's uh, pencil. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an expensive pencil. <laughs> I'm not even that good at drawing, let's be honest here. What are we doing with that? The pencil's definitely... I, I like it for note-taking. I'm not a huge artist. I have done some kind of network sketches, and when thinking about something, it's definitely nice to, to pull that out. The other interesting thing, don't forget, you can split screen that <gasps> how do i do that and you get two so you would get how do i do that <laughs> you would get two ipads worth of real estate on that screen so how how do i do that seriously how pull, do i do that pull, <laughs> pull out from the side pull out pull out. other side <laughs> well from the other side hold the, on what's i don't so like from where from the right hand side like, swipe out so like okay i got like slack open right so from the right <laughs> Did, this the, isn't working. The panel slide out. You're gonna have to give me a tutorial okay. after the show. <laughs> after the show. Yeah. You got. Show me your ways. Show me your <laughs> iPad Pro Jedi ways here, because this is. Oh, and that's the. I mean, how many what, fingers am I supposed to use? Is it easy to do? Like, it should be one. One from the app, right side. If an app's open. Oh, and there's that thing. Wait a minute. What's with, that? With one open already? Or from you, the home with, a, with an app? With an app <gasps> open. It happened. <laughs> It happened. Okay, so now <laughs> wait, now it's just like a giant list of all the apps. Or is this all? Yeah. So pick one of the apps. Um, I'm just kind of picking random stuff here. Um, so ahead. that's all the apps that support multi-screen. Oh, so that's the, okay. Yeah, so the app has to be way. written wow. to support multi-screen. Oh, but literally, all the developer has to do to go in and support it is check a checkbox. Oh, it's okay. not like that's, it's <laughs> yeah. They don't have I to just, change with the the proportions. So or? what it what it what they they were pretty smart in the way they did it. It only works. When the iPad's on its in landscape, landscape, okay. When you s pull out, if you pull out a quarter of the way, it takes it and it knows that that's the dimension of the phone interface. Oh, so then okay. it's it, like a quarter would be a phone, and then a half is an like on a nine seven, it's an iPad Mini uses the iPad Mini interface, and then on the the, the Pro twelve, that's the twelve nine. Hmm. It uses it's actually two ipad side by side oh, okay that's, that's, that's so that's, that's kind of how they good. figured that out and then you can actually um open up two safari tabs at the same time too Ooh, side by oh. side if we're, that's if that's a like setting a safari. Safari. yeah it is pretty much like an ipad <laughs> size like <laughs> from there it's insane wow <laughs> yeah, like it's so much like i say i got this thing and and i held it up to my my macbook pro screen i'm like it's almost as big as my laptop it's just like i don't like this isn't the thing i'm just gonna like hang like i need to cradle it yeah like it's so big you know not, not that it's heavy you're just like it's there's so much size to it um and i don't know i'm sure i'll get used to it uh i also found my iphone 3gs today uh, <laughs> that was <nice>. startling <laughs> startlingly small <laughs> so um yeah what happened to their tiny devices that we're supposed to you know right well that the, so the the 9.7 inch is yeah. the ex that exact same concept, just in a smaller, shrunk down right, form right. factor. But you are you still have the Mac Mini or the iPad Mini size, so yeah, it kind of works out for that. Hmm. I'm done with small devices. It's only going to be done with bigger. small devices. Yeah, I can't go to a smaller phone now. I have a plus. Well, yeah, you have a plus? It's, How? It's not. Yeah, it's not. That's. <laughs> I mean, I have a huge wallet case on it too. Oh, and geez! Ooh, yeah. Wow! Yeah, there you it's go. Great. Yeah. I love it. it. I'm so never. Great. I'm never going back. See, I always love that the tiniest ladies have the largest phones. <laughs> I, I've, no, I, I've been noticing that them getting my Uber with their like giant plus phones, and they're like they're like, you know, five foot tall with this thing, and like I'm like I can't see your face 
<laughs> pass your phone what's happening over there um but yeah definitely um well max you know i um i, I can't seem to put um mario run in split screen oh yeah <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh but i understand something's happening with the android finally it's yeah it's coming someday someday no, no release <laughs> date but people can what they're calling like a pre-registration period where you can sign up and you'll be notified when it's available Whenever that may be. Right now, it's just on iOS, uh, and there's and Nintendo is saying that's because of privacy uh, issues. They're just saying everything's because of privacy. Yeah, issues. That, right. That's it's a, what a What's cop out. Yeah, right, exactly. Well, that's why what, because there was a big be? to do about you have to be online to play Mario Run. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you do, oh, yeah. a, pri- a, a privacy? No, wait, yeah. or a piracy? That, that was no, piracy. privacy. That was piracy. You're the, saying the this online is... was piracy. Yes, oh, that's why oh, they right. didn't. That's why so close, you have to be so online. close to words. <laughs> 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 For enough, to, enough to confuse me. Um, but uh, yeah, so so it's privacy. That's, that's what they're saying. Uh, that seems strange. That seems like a Nintendo, bit of a cop out. Nintendo, listen, everybody else has figured this out years ago. Just mm-hmm. like you figured it out online way after anybody else, and stu- still use those amazingly arcane friend codes for me to connect with somebody on my iPhone. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> nonsense i remember the wii yeah you could you could buddy someone like and play um guitar hero yeah but then there was no headset so you couldn't talk to them no (laughs) you had to like call them on the phone and be like hey do you want to play yeah (laughs) yep yep yeah there's there's no voice chat in splatoon and like their big competitive game you know don't don't try to to communicate with your team i I remember when this was hard and games were trying to figure this out like there was a there's a resident evil game where you can only select certain things to say to the rest of your survivors, right? Oh, you remember yeah, that, yeah, like yeah, on the yeah, PlayStation yeah. Two, when mm-hmm. we were first starting to yep. like kind yep. of get this online thing going. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and again, it just like Nintendo does so well with their games, but their online component is just like, what are you doing, it's, guys? Yeah. Yep. Like, just hire somebody from one of your companies and <laughs> yeah. do this, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, you don't even have to do that. It isn't most of the stuff? I mean. Uh, there's got to be something that 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 they can kind of integrate. Like back in the day, everybody had GameSpy to integrate uh, uh, finding servers and in in, mm-hmm, in your mm-hmm. video games back in the Unreal days, right? Yep. Yep. Um, like there has to be something better than them trying to roll their own and just being maddening in this in this whole process. Yeah, I don't know if it's ever going to get better. Uh, <laughs> they've had so many chances. They got one and... more chance. Right. They got yeah. one more <laughs> chance with this thing. No, no, no. Now it's just uh, um, everybody gathers around. And, sure, and you do it that way. Yeah, it doesn't look like the that's Nintendo the, Switch. Yeah, so. it doesn't look like they're going for like hardcore online shooters no. with the Switch. No. That's not no, the no, idea no. here. But I yeah. thought that was the run of the Switch, and that was one of their agreements that they worked out was that they would put a hardcore graphics core in there that would allow all the developers not to have to special build. For the the console, so mm-hmm. yeah, I guess they could say, yeah, you can you can build your game cross platform pretty easy, but don't count on a voice chat or yeah, or major online multi multiplayer. Yeah, it's yeah. it's also what's well, rumors now, but they're saying that in the cradle in at, on when you connect it to a screen, it's more powerful than when you're taking it portable. That makes sense. So then, well, then you have to the games are get more complicated. Like it'll have to scale down, and then mm-hmm. games have to be developed for that. Huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, is, is that is that very different from what's happening now with our um, uh, Xbox and PlayStation uh, um, kind of relaunches with a 4K? Because mm-hmm. they're kind of yeah. they're kind of doing the same process, aren't they? There's already like, hey, make sure you use these textures for 4K. Make sure you use these resolution textures for 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 the regular regular standard SD, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Like game, but the games have to be made with that in mind. Like right. the, the big one is Rise of the Tomb Raider has uh on the for the play for the, it's been optimized for the playstation 4 pro so you can actually go in and like mess with settings like you would for a pc game on the playstation 4 pro um but not every which most again, of the games do not do that which again is more of a these are becoming more pc games why wouldn't you just get a pc what, <laughs> <laughs> basically what well, that cost cost but it, but 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 we're getting all the same um, um, I have to install my game before I can play it kind of problems mm-hmm. now are on all the consoles basically except for 
Uh, and plus Nintendo, by the way, going proprietary again with their, their cartridges. We know how well that worked out around 2000 um, with the Nintendo Switch. But uh, but again, they've been doing it for the DS and everything. So mm-hmm. I, I guess... You I know guess. that I mean? You'll get one of those... What was the, What's the DS with the micro SD card? Where you can you can pretty much sideload every game known to man. Oh yeah, oh, that's sure. the, looking yeah. forward yeah. to that too. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be able to download every Switch game. Sure, yes, yeah, exactly. yeah, that's true. Yeah, but have you? Uh, but Mario Run has anyone been playing that? Oh, oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. you like your big fans? Yes, yes. Big fans. Right. yes. Yeah. I paid. It. Well, that's did you see the stat today? That like three percent of people who bought it or who downloaded it actually bought. The, I, I don't know yeah. anyone who wow. had. But and then Apple came back immediately into the media and said 3% is nowhere near the cur- They wouldn't give the real yeah, stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apple who never comments on these kinds <laughs> no, of things. No, but they said that's know. nowhere near the the correct metric. I also like, and I don't know, if, well, no, yeah, because it's, it's gone pretty bonkers since we had our last show here because I, I am um, all in on Pokemon Go. Thank you, Santa Hat Pikachu. <laughs> I now have like eight of him. Um, but uh, he's been popping up a lot. He popped up like four times. Well, today they, for they, me. they, 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 um, over the new year, they pumped up the spawn rates for all the partner Pokemons. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. I've never seen a Bulbasaur before. Mm-hmm. Now I have three Bulbasaurs and an Ivysaur. Hmm. I don't have what's the IB. That's the next up, at least. Okay. I'm, I know. I I didn't even realize it was something different until I caught him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is yeah. my first real Pokemon uh, uh, experience, so yeah. I'm, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> um, and then Mad Mike's talking to me about all the new Pokemons on, on like Sun that he's playing, and I'm just like, I can't even. No, I'm still back on like the original 150. Yeah. You know, yep. yep. Um, where, where's my Mew at? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, but yeah. It, it, but, but there was a thing going around because I, I know the podcasts I listen to are like, oh, nobody plays Pokemon Go anymore, and now and they're like, oh yeah, hey, there it is in the top five mm-hmm. grossing um, in iTunes, and it has been for the year. Yeah, and mm-hmm. has yeah. been yep. consistently. Yep. Right. There was a resurgence with the with the update with the the holiday update and everything. I, dropped, I still don't understand I dropped the five watch. Bucks. <laughs> I drive five bucks on it so, yeah. <laughs> once again. I, I still don't understand the watch integration because I thought I was supposed to be able to use it like on a treadmill, and I can kind of. But it seems like if you stop the workout, it's like you have to go all the way. Mm. You can't. It like you know how the progress bar if you walk around normal. The progress bar goes up, and if you stop walking, you're just where you left off is where you start the next time. Right. It seems like on the treadmill, it's if I didn't get to actually hatching the Pokemon, mm-hmm. I lost all of that. Which Ooh. I th- oh man, and, or That's maybe weird. maybe it's maybe it's I did it wrong because mm-hmm. the other thing I noticed is it as soon as you kick off Pokemon on the watch, it stops the fitness tracker. The Apple Fitness Tracker. Yeah. I think they have a little little bit of work to do, or at mm. least explanation yeah. to help people understand. Yeah. yeah, but it definitely the watch integration definitely got me back into it too. Mm-hmm. And the alert of I can get an alert with my phone in my pocket of what Pokemon are around me definitely has me pulling my phone back out. Sure. Yeah. So the biggest thing for me is I don't know if you can. This is kind of a hack, or I just kind of build it back into my life, but. Um, Driving um, Uber and Lyft and playing Pokemon is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, because you totally have balls. safe too. Oh, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not driving while playing. Mm-hmm. I just turned it on in between, and I happen to be somewhere else in the city, and I just turn it on and say, "Okay, well, where's where's some of the um, Pokestops at?" And I'll drive over to one and and uh, and and get, get a new Pokemon whenever I see it on the tracker and stuff. So I haven't walked with Pokemon in like ages, <laughs> but I've like unhashed so many eggs just from like that little bit of like I leave it on and 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 you know as you go. Before it kicks on the passenger thing, mm-hmm. like you pick up a few steps here and there, right? Um, and it's really like it's it's something that keeps me occupied while I'm out and about. And I feel like Lyft and Uber are also like Pokemon Go because eh, you're trying, <laughs> you know, because you're trying to 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 level up, especially with Lyft. Um, and I did pa- I did level up with Lyft this week, and I felt really good. It was like it's it's gamified, right? Mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. just like it's the same thing as going to find these things on on Pokemon Go. It just it was really interesting for that kind of stuff. So that's mm-hmm. that's some stuff I've been tracking the last yeah. few weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've lost my stories. Anybody else have anything you want to touch on before we get out of here? Do you want to talk about my online dating thing? Um, yeah, <laughs> it's called Coffee Meets Bagel. 
<laughs> it's a what? dating app. Okay, apparently it's a dating app that's been around, and essentially, I guess, girls, the way that girls and guys online date is totally different, or how they want to, at least, according um, to what this app thinks. Uh, essentially, the guys go through and pick who they think they're compatible with, and girls get a whole bunch of what they call bagels, essentially. The guys that are interested in them that they pick from. So they're already interested in them. It's not going, oh, I think I might like him, but then he never responds back. So the, it's, it's, that's however the app works. But they actually have it pow, pow, paired now with both Yelp and um, Spotify. So essentially, you're like, okay, now I've met somebody, where do we go? So now you're able to pick date spots within the app that uses Yelp and tells you where to go. You know, the same thing, like what kind of, you're looking for coffee, for food, for drinks, uh, where you're at, like how much you're willing to spend, and then gives you options as far as where you should go in your area. And then the other one is called Mixtape. It's another section of this app. And you essentially, it takes both your Spotify play, playlists and creates a mixtape for you. So it kind of overcomes the, oh, we don't have anything to talk about. So now you have this mixtape you created together so you know what kind of music the other person is interested in. Which I thought was really cool. I mean, these are both really neat things to be integrated into a dating app. But, um, yeah, like I said, it was it's... So you can see what they're into. Like, I mean, he could be like, oh, man, we have nothing in common with this person. Because, <laughs> I mean, music is important in a lot of people's lives. And it's a nice yeah. mm -hmm. wordless way to kind of get an introduction to these people, too. These new folks that you're going out with. But, yeah, Coffee Meets Bagel. <laughs> I've never, so, I've so never heard It's a really cool app. name. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. It was, it's, yeah. it's really, like I said, we, we, I've never even heard of this app. Not that I've particularly been keeping up with the dating apps. <laughs> but, but, yeah. So I thought so there you cool. go. Awesome. CoffeeMeetsBagel.com if you want to check that out. Find some love on your phone. Find some phone love. Wait, yeah. no. Uh, <laughs> Make a mixtape. Make Download a mixtape. Put mix it on a cassette tape. Give it to your new love. They'll be impressed. That's great. All right. Uh, well, I think uh, we need to wrap things up here. It's been a great uh, new back in the awesome cast uh, again and please people let, let us know uh, uh your thoughts on the new setup on the new sound and everything going on here uh so uh of course uh at k dutters on the twitter yep doing things and stuff doing things and, yes. and stuff uh, instagram i want to do things and stuff yeah. how did you get to do things i know and stuff? my life is awesome <laughs> how did you find a hello kitty new year's was it's that Snapchat. what it's a Snapchat. Yeah, it was a Snapchat filter for New Jeez. Year's. Yeah, and then you can download it from Snapchat, and then I can use it on other social media apps. Nice. Yeah, so that's how I put it on the Instagram. Nice. <laughs> Sword does not like the Snapchat. I'm, well, I'm done. There's no You're reason. There's no reason to anymore, right? All the good stuff's over on Instagram now. Yeah. You know. No, so. no, no. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. Give me, give me one reason I should be on Snapchat. Uh, Hello Kitty filter. I mean, I okay. think we already answered well, this question. Got me there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, J John Chichilla on at Chill on the Twitter, ChillaTech.net. Yes, Big Bank International. John Chichilla Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> Baller LLC. He's your gadget guy. Again, if you have any questions about what tablets or anything like that, he's the one for you to head up. Uh, Definitely tweet me. Hit me up on on mm -hmm. Facebook, or even drop the question in the yeah. in the uh, Facebook group for Awesome Cast. There's been uh, a few people dropping in there. Thank you, everybody. Has been uh, sharing the stories, especially Missy. Uh, and Brandon and uh, and everybody else are tweeting us stories or anything like that. Uh, we definitely uh, uh, take those in consideration. A lot of times they get dropped in the dock and maybe don't get to all of them, but um, they really help. I I got a Snoopy drone out of that, so yeah. that's that's <laughs> was definitely worthwhile. Uh, so and Max Max Parker is uh, Game Guy PGH. Yes, I fixed the Twitter handle during the course of the show. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, what, what do you got coming up? Uh, coming up, we've got uh, Astro A50 gaming headset. Completely wireless, wireless charging, Ooh. and wireless sound review coming up. Um, Scuff Gaming uh, Xbox One Elite <gasps> controller. It's like a pro style controller. That review is coming up. And the first big release is uh, Resident Evil 7 for VR and non VR. So that's the first big release coming up this year. So that's going to be in a couple weeks. I hear uh, Resident Evil and VR is insane. It's awesome. <laughs> it is, it is uh, a little too much to handle at times. Like horror. VR has revolutionized the horror genre for me. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like horror, really, the scary games have already been a little bit too much for me. And mm -hmm. then, like, but when you put yourself in that world, it's just like, 
uh, this is like this is too much. We need to have a whole conversation about this because I have lots of opinions in the spare house. Yeah, this could, be, this could be a side thing. And, yeah. and, and Chachi has. Uh, I know Chachi got one for for the Gear VR that he's put on his face twice. Plays for like maybe a minute before he scares the crap out of me. Has to take yeah. it off. Yep. Yep. So same like, way. And it's not like. Anything extreme is just something startling, and it just mm-hmm. feels yeah very, very it's just very extreme for little things. Yes, right? yeah, absolutely, so. yeah, it's terrifying. Yes, <laughs> um, and of course at Sorgatron on the Twitter is my stuff. Sorgatronmedia.com. We got so much great stuff coming up. Um, we got um, I, what is the interview? I think we're doing. A, I think we're posting the interview from Bits to Pieces that are doing uh, 3D printers over at Work Hard Pittsburgh. That'll be going up soon. And we have a, a couple of great things uh, lined up, uh, hopefully uh, with a lot of companies and uh, um, um, cool new studios happening here in Pittsburgh. So keep an eye on all that stuff. Awesomecast.net. Subscribe to all the shows wherever you uh, get your podcasting or video feed needs. And check us out here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. My dog wants me to get off the air, apparently. Uh, <laughs> if you can hear him uh, bargain out there. What's he doing? <laughs> Does he just want to at me? We were buddies. What happened? <laughs> you did not for pizza. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, there, there he is. Nope. Uh, but no, please check out everything. Subscribe. Uh, check us out. Patreon.com slash awesome cast. And uh, the stream is usually <laughs> read at the awesome cast Facebook page. Thank you so much to our awesome uh, guests. You've been our awesome audience. <laughs> Have an awesome week. <laughs>